What's up guys, this is White Charisma, back with another XMod Drifting 101. This time it's uh, the uh, Gen 1 board swap tutorial. As you can see here, I have all my parts ready, ready to go, all the materials ready to go. Uh, I will link in the description below what you will need. But as you can see here, I do have my Gen 1 chassis. Um, the Micro T Losi, the Losi Micro T Electronics, the servo and receiver, and also a controller. Uh, other things that you will need to uh, do the Gen 1 board swap are some uh, side cutters, um, wire strippers, wire cutters, um, of course your fully charged batteries to test them in the end, a motor, got the uh, carbon deck right there, that will just be, that will be explained later how the antenna is going to work because the uh, receiver already has a wire antenna, so as you can see here, usually you screw on the antenna for an XMOD, but this time for this tutorial all you need is just the deck and um, the wa the antenna wire actually just goes through one of these holes and it sticks straight out through that and uh, instead of using an antenna you'll just use the wire antenna that comes with the receiver so jumping right into the tutorial I'll try to keep this as short as possible um, what you'll need beforehand of course is a disassembled gen 1 chassis you'll need to know how to do this beforehand uh, I'm not really going to go in depth with it but um, as you can see right here, uh, um, I actually shaved down one of the uh, screws that held the original Gen 1 board in there. And you'll need that because uh, you'll be placing the micro T board sideways right here. And the servo will actually be right here, similar to how the Gen 1 layout is. And um, what, what you can see here is I actually switched out the wires as well um, to get the Gen 1 electronics out, you'll need to desolder at all of the uh, battery tabs. So I already did that and replaced the wiring. And you'll need the side cutters and the wire strippers just to uh, strip the wires out and if you need to cut them to the proper length. So another optional thing you can do is, as you can see I actually cut the uh, uh, battery holders so they actually don't need to be screwed anymore like use the screws to bolt onto the chassis but uh, I actually taped them. I used double sided six, uh, stick tape right here and stuck them to the sides of the chassis. They don't move but um, and you can't really adjust them anymore but for drifting you usually just want them up as far as possible. See how it's pretty much in the center of the chassis just to keep the car balanced and everything. And a couple of other options I have GPM of course all wheel drive that you need for drifting and um, just the uh, camber stuff. The uh, These are from Xmod International. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have these in stock. They're not completely necessary, but they're pretty cool. It's just the uh, rear strut bar, and you can adjust the uh, camber of the rear tires. And uh, for the front, you can see that they actually have a little bit of camber, and I did a small mod of my own. Um, It'll be a little more in-depth in the written tutorial, so I won't go too in-depth here, but I cut the chassis so that you can move the knuckles a little bit farther and then super glued a little piece of plastic to uh, hold it in place so now the uh, knuckle is sort of like crooked, but that just gives it a little bit of camber. Um, helps a little bit with drifting, less grip on, like less tire surface on the uh, ground so you have um, less traction which makes it more slippery and all that stuff just just to get a little bit of a better drift all right so jumping in to uh, how to put the board into the chassis now I took the liberty of already opening up all the packaging and everything so this is what you get out of a micro T package you have to buy these separately um, this is the uh, servo and as you can see it's laid out a little bit different than the uh, X mount servo it actually is supposed to sit sideways see how it goes full lock to lock sideways. Um, some people do. I have seen a couple of people mount the servo sideways on the Gen 1. And um, I, I did do that for a while, but I ended up having a lot of problems because um, the servo horn isn't actually long enough to reach down onto the tie rod. So you had to custom make one, and it, it was a lot of hassle to uh, get it just right and perfect. So in this tutorial, I will be mounting it the way the um, XMOD servo is, it'll be straight up and down. And then for the board right here, 
you will actually be putting double sided stick tape on this side and sticking it to uh, the side wall of the Gen 1 similar to like this. This is sort of like the mock up where you just kind of place things where you'll think they'll go and in the end it'll, it'll of course it'll look a lot nicer than this but it'll sort of sit like this. Now the problem with the the way that um, this is laid out is as you can see the board sticks out pretty far. Um, this does prevent some bodies to not be able to be used, um, notably the Corvette, the NSX, and um, I think the RSX, a couple of the bodies that will um, bump into this corner here. I think the 350Z as well. But um, you can mount it uh, flat as well. Mounting it flat on top does um, sort of like bring a solution to the problem. It's just that you'll have a higher center of gravity. And since this is drifting, I mean, it doesn't matter, but I remember when I was uh, driving with rubber tires, the car would constantly like to flip. So it, it's really personal preference the way you want to uh, mount the board and what you find suitable for what you're doing. So for drifting, it really doesn't matter. I will be mounting it sideways because I'll be using my Lancer or my uh, 370Z body on this chassis and it will fit. I know it will because they have enough room. So the first thing you'll want to do is actually to take off the servo horn and move it so that it'll work um, so that it's sitting up and down. Now the way that they built this is I think when it goes full lock to lock it sort of does this weird uh, kind of like spring stretching thing. Well we're not going to be able to do that when it's uh, mounted for an X mod. So I'll go ahead and take out the servo horn. And what you'll need is actually some super glue or crazy glue, which I actually have right here. And you'll actually have to take the servo horn. It'll come in half because it does a sort of like, I'm not sure what it is. People who have a micro T can probably explain to me, but it like sort of has a spring in here. It sort of snaps back. Well, you're going to want to mount it so it's about right here and glue it like this. And once you have it like that, you can turn the servo horn and adjust it so that it will be straight up and down. Like that. Like the way the uh, stock XMOD servo has it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So now that you've unscrewed it and you did not, um, what you don't want to do is actually take off the servo horn because right now you're able to take off the servo horn. Just take the uh, part that falls off at first, the, the first half and you can glue it like this so it's straight up and down. So what you want to do is just place some glue right in here and uh, place the servo horn on it and wait for it to dry. And it should be straight up and down like this and you should have a full motion that turns like side to side, full lock to full lock, similar to the way the next mod does. Okay, so you should end up with this at the end. Uh, I took the liberty of putting the screw back in you don't really need it since the uh, super glue should be able to hold it, but uh, I put it in there just just because it makes it gives it looks uh, that factory stock to look. So right now, um, this is something I found out. Um, I have, I've actually done this build before. This is the second time that I'm doing it as a tutorial. Um, micro T servos don't like to be played with. So as you can see, I turn it like that. So that's the one one uh, direction full lock, and that's the other. But um. Yeah, micro T servos, if you play with them too much, but yeah, um, it's doing it right now is it likes to lock itself and it doesn't like to move. So um, when you want to make your car like pose, you know, like turn the wheels or something, uh, with a micro T servo, try to do it while the car's on, then turn it off while like the car's at full lock already or something because if you try to do it with the car um, off and you just keep playing with the servo, you'll end up sort of just ruining the servo. I'm not sure what is wrong with it on the inside where it like just doesn't like to be moved around. But um, that's just something to keep in mind just to uh, keep your servo running properly and not really run into any problems. So right now we can actually uh, start mocking up the servo. So you know like an XMOD servo where it goes on right onto the uh, tie rod. You can just sort of place it there and just sort of get a look to see how it's going to be placed because now once you okay so I'm starting to run into some camera issues hopefully that won't happen again but it's like stop writing it keeps 
stopping my recording so kind of weird um, right now keep it really quick is you can put double sided stick tape on your servo and then you can put it in place so what you want to do is actually to put double sided stick tape on the bottom and the side and you want to put enough so it actually lines up with the wheels as straight as possible by the time you actually get your car running and everything you can use a steering trim on the remote to make the wheels straight and the way that you like it so you don't have to worry about getting the wheels perfectly straight and the servo perfectly dismounted it just needs to be in a general a good general position so that it will run properly when you're done alright so now that you got the servo mounted it should look something like this so the wheels should look pretty straight and the uh, servo horn should look pretty straight in there as well as you can see um, the double sided stick tape is on the side and if you notice it's actually one layer from the chassis up to the servo but um, I actually stuck another little piece so that it um, is sticking to the battery holder as well so you can see that right there and on the bottom of the servo there's actually two layers of tape kinda hard to see sorry with all these like wires and stuff but there's actually a first layer of tape and then a second layer that holds the servo in place now that we're done with uh, the servo for now we can put the chassis aside and just take a look at the board now a micro T board um, it is still just the whole uh, one one whole uh, receiver um, board style kinda like an X mod and a mini Z so the servo plug goes in right here and um, what I noticed is um, a little bit different the layout is these are the power wires right here and these are the motor wires and it actually has um, it's kinda hard to see right here for those of you that don't, haven't really even uh, looked into micro T's or know about them they have a double stacked or not double stacked but double sided FETs so there are two FETs here and two on the bottom so it is a lot more powerful than a normal X mod board especially the gen 1 um, I'd say it's just a little bit more powerful than an evil board you're definitely going to notice a power difference but um, yeah next we will be desoldering these so what I will probably be de desoldering first is just the power wires and desoldering the power wires and um, I will be just soldering up power wires from the gen 1 and the gen 1 um, as you can see they aren't marked I do have a piece of heat shrink right here so I can mark one positive for red black for negative um, this is actually the positive wire because if you notice you know you see the cell layout negative positive this is the positive on this side negative positive negative so this is the negative wire so I will be getting into that right now um, what you'll want to do is actually to mount the board sideways with a piece of double sided stick tape it's okay that this double sided stick tape is on all of these uh, solder joints I haven't, I haven't had a problem with that at all um, usually if you have some other type of tape that if it's not just the double sided foam tape and uh, something I think not that isn't very like insulated something that can sort of hold a charge or conduct electricity like a uh, duct tape I think that will cause a problem because it will actually like connect all of these and like maybe fry your board and stuff so try to avoid that just use the double sided foam tape that you can find at Walmart um, yeah so I'll be right back I'll try to desolder these and uh, get these wires up and see if I can actually at least power up the board before putting in the motor and see if I can at least just get it turning alright so one thing I actually forgot to mention is to actually put the motor in just to mock up the way the board is set up so what you want to do is just like uh, screw down the motor temporarily and to see how much space you actually have for the board and as you can see here um, it fits sideways and um, a little hard to get these wires out but um, the crystal holder um, some of you might be wondering well how is the motor going to stay in place well the crystal holder actually doubles as holding the motor in place right here as you can see the end of the motor is actually going to be held in place by the board so instead of like the motor like shaking and stuff it'll actually stay right there and right now it's a pretty uh, similar setup to the way I uh, mounted the servo um, see how there's two well, kinda hard to catch this but there's two layers of double side stick tape where the battery and the board meet 
but between the chassis and the board there's only one layer and it's kind of hard to see but it's, it's thin and uh, it's just one layer going up so this does keep the board in place uh, there's a little a little bit more neat than what I had it originally but um, uh, in my first one I had a lot more layers and I ended up kind of messing up my car and everything so I got rid of that so starting over here and everything's a little bit more clean but what you definitely want to have is see this uh, space between the drive shaft and the board you're going to need that you don't want anything to get in the way of the drive shaft spinning for your all-wheel drive so right now I will still try to uh, desolder these wires and get it all wired up real quick and um, right here as you can see are the motor wires so I think the um, orange is positive and the blue is negative but I'll have to go back and look at some pictures and double check real quick okay so trying to desolder while it was still in the chassis was pretty tough so I actually ended up um, taking it out and uh, it was a little annoying because the antenna is still new, so it's it's pretty um, like stiff and like it does it doesn't like to just sit in place when you try to bend it. So I just taped everything down, and um, it's a pretty temporary setup just to tape everything down and just desolder these right here. And I'm just gonna desolder them. And uh, yeah, I guess it's just one way. If you don't have helping hands, if you ever heard of those, it's like these clamps that like hold stuff together or hold the uh, board in place. So you can, it has a magnifying glass and a solder stuff. Well, this is sort of like my ghetto rig of helping hands, just just to keep everything a little bit easier. So if you do have some trouble like desoldering it because of all the wires and stuff in the way, just tape them out of the way. Just tape it down. It's fine. It won't hurt the board. All right. As you can see now, I actually went ahead and soldered on my motor wires as well, and I marked the positive one with the red heat shrink. Now that's pretty optional unless you have, if you don't have the uh, black and red wires, like some people do have black and red wires so they can just, um, you know, solder the correct color to the correct side. Um, one thing to note about the Micro T board is uh, since it comes from factory with uh, the factory solders, they're kind of hard to remove. So one tip I would want to use is to add, add solder to, a little bit of solder to the joint and then heat it up and remember to uh, not heat it up for too long because if you let it sit on the board too long you can damage the board by um, heating it up a lot you know and um, what I did was just kind of a touch and go sort of thing until I saw the solder was like um, pretty much all liquid and then that's when you start just uh, tugging tugging on the wire until it comes off now for the FETs for the motor wires uh, I remember on my first one it was really easy, but this time around, um, it looks like when they soldered it, they even went ahead and soldered it, um, these wires onto the legs of the FETs. And what you want to be careful is if you um, don't heat it up long enough and you tug on it, you could actually end up ripping a leg off of the FET or ripping a pad off of the board, and that's bad because that's pretty much you, you kind of screw it. You have to replace the FETs. And um, it's bad for your board, you know, you just lost a connector right there. So it, that, that could be one reason if um, you end up doing this and it ends up not working as you d did something wrong removing the FETs. But as you can see here, um, I tinned my wires and then I uh, soldered them on right away. Um, they're pretty clean. Um, not as bad as they used to be. They used to be pretty bad, but um, yeah, I'm going to try to put this back together. Um, as you can see here, for the FET, the positive wire is on the right FET and the negative wire is on the left. And um, these aren't wired up right now, but the power wires correspond to the power switch. So red is on the left and black is on the right. All right, now I got the board back in the chassis and I started neatening it up a bit and I actually got the uh, power wire solder. But first I actually got the board mounted in with the double side stick tape. Um, similar to the, how I did with the servo and I got the servo plug plugged in neatly um, all you gotta do is just you know just mosey it in there the drive shaft is still free so the wheels can still f spin um, I'm actually keeping the power switch in this one so I actually put a little piece of stick tape there and I have a power switch keep it a little keep it pretty factory looking even though it looks kinda ghetto with a power switch just kinda sitting there but um had a good wire length for my 
power wires, which are right here. This is the positive and this is the negative. Um, luckily, these are Superflex 18 wires, so all I had to do was just like bend it at a 90 degree angle, and it, it will actually stay in that shape. That's what's cool about some of these wires. Um, if you bend them, they'll actually stay in like the shape that you bent them. So all you have to do is just solder them in place after you tin them. So those actually ended up looking pretty nice. It was a lot cleaner than my first one. I'm so glad that I got better at soldering. Um, one way is just by practice, and another way is just looking at watching and looking at YouTube videos, you know, and just learning how to solder properly. But um, yeah, I'm going to uh, solder in these motor wires real quick and see what I got and see if it's uh, up and running properly. All right, so this is the moment of truth here. Um, I actually don't even know if this thing works yet, so let me <laughs> lower this uh, camera here. All right, so got the batteries in the transmitter. I'm going to turn that on. Uh, all right, I guess it's off, so here it is. Turning it on right now. All right, and it works. It's alive. Beautiful. And I gotta double check if it's actually turning properly, so... Yeah, right now it's actually inverted. So, <laughs> um, what's cool, actually, about the Micro T controller is... Um, on the Kyosho remote, it actually doesn't have this, but... Up top is throttle and steering. If I turn the steering tab, which I'm gonna do right now... Now, the steering is actually normal. So, I actually just... It, it'll invert... It's like your steering inversion. So, now when I turn right... Uh, here, let's see here, try to capture this. When I turn right, it's actually turning right. When I turn left, it's actually turning left. And then now, um, all these knobs and controls on here, um, you can adjust how far your steering is and your steering trim and how, um, how sensitive you want your throttle and everything. And, um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I'm actually really surprised I got this working, how neat I actually got it. Um, wow. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the tutorial, guys. Um, uh, this is how you actually swap your Gen 1 if you have Gen 1 parts laying around or if you are a dedicated Gen 1 fan. Um, yeah, it's definitely a great chassis, especially when you get the all-wheel drive in and the GPM. It'll end up... I, I'm one of those um, guys that I believe that the Gen 1 is a better chassis than the Evo, even though I have three Evo cars and I love them. Um, the Gen 1 just lasts such a long time. I mean, I've had this this car for like five or six years, um, I've actually just gone through Gen 1 boards. Those of end up failing me are the boards itself, but the chassis, the chassis, uh, still outlasts, outlasts the board, which is pretty sweet. So now I got a new Micro T Drifter right here. Um, it's, I'm gonna make a video pretty soon, try to at least get this thing running properly. I'm gonna get it trimmed up, but yeah, as you can see, the steering is much, much better than a stock Gen 1. See how it's, a uh, yeah, you know, try to underside. It's going full lock to lock. And that's what you want. And it's extremely sensitive, just to the slightest touch. I'm barely turning it. Or if I like go like crazy and just turn it, it this is just this is the reason why you do a hobby board swap. Sorry I'm like stuttering a little bit, but I've been in here for like been in my room just locked in here just trying to fix this for like two hours now. Just for you guys, right here. This is just for you guys. This is a tutorial just for you guys. But um I'm going to try to take some more pictures and get a full write-up and parts list and everything on Xmod's forum. But yeah, this is about it. Thanks for watching, guys. The um, Gen 1 board swap tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or send me a message. I'll try to reply as fast as I can. And thank you for watching. See you guys later. Okay, so something a little funny I didn't expect. The 370Z body doesn't fit. <laughs> oh man, I found out um, this is the part, this is the culprit on the NSX, the 350Z, the 370 right now is right here. Um, this part of the board is sticking, is kind of sticking out way too far, and it bumps into like the windshield area of the body. So, I will see what bodies fit, <laughs> and I will let you know. Alright, so here's proof that one body fits on this chassis. It is the Subaru Impreza body. And yes, it does fit on this Gen 1 that I just modded. So here is one body that fits. So if you do run an Impreza, you have no worries. This model will work with your Impreza.
And as you can see here, it does fit the Lancer Evo if you do run an Evo car, a Lancer Evo body on your Gen 1. Looks great. So I think it is a little funny that I forgot to mention this mod is body specific, but a way around it is um, something I did, I think I mentioned earlier in the video is instead of mounting the uh, board sideways, um, you do have some space on the servo and on top of the uh, motor to put some tape and if you want to lay the board flat on top, um, you can actually do that. I might end up actually having to do that because I do want to use my 370Z body. The only thing is uh, it will raise the center of gravity slightly, so if you're using like rubber tires and stuff, you'll, you'll be prone to flipping a little more. But I think for drifting and what I do, I think it would be okay to uh, put the board up on top instead of um, having it sideways. But it does look pretty clean like this. I do like it like this. I will, I will probably keep it the way it is right now, just because uh, this took a while to do, and um, it's quite a hassle to get a lot of the uh, double-sided stick tape off of the chassis and moving it around. So uh, I hope you did enjoy the video. I hope it is helpful. And um, yeah, all right, before my camera cuts off on me one more time, I just want to say thanks to everybody for sticking around watching this tutorial. And uh, um, I will try to get an XMOD drifting video up soon. I do have five running cars now. Um, this is the one that I just finished for this tutorial. Um, I do have an Evo car, a stock one with all-wheel drive, um, with no board swap yet, so that would be pretty interesting to see drift. Um, a Mini Z all-wheel drive, and my two board swapped Evo cars. So hopefully I'll try to get a video out sometime uh, during winter break here. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. And um, if you're wondering how to uh, improve your drifting skills and everything, just don't, e don't even hesitate to uh, send me a message or leave a comment on a video. You know, I'll try to help you out as soon as I can. So thank you for watching and happy drifting and happy holidays to all.